Today is a great day. Why? Because it's the first day I get to do something out on the grass. The weather out here in Utah is ridiculous. It seems like yesterday I was chopping snow off the roof and today it is beautiful and warm and the snow is gone and I get to get out on the lawn. But here's what we're gonna be talking about. Sand and peat. So here's why today's topic is very important. It's because a lot of you who've been doing sand leveling for a while are starting to change your entire soil structure. You're building up so much sand that it's going to be more and more difficult for your fertilizers to work as well as they used to. A little odd, right? So here's what I urge you to do. Sand and peat moss. Peat moss is cheap and you don't need very much. 10%, 12%, not a whole lot. Mix it in, get it down when you're doing your sand leveling. But you know what? Enough talk, I wanna go to work. Let's do it. This, there's some spots kind of across here, kind of in a pattern uh, that looked like maybe some dogs walked across it while it was frosted over out there it's like almost very clear foot patterns that came through here today i'm actually going to top dress this thing and uh throw a little peat moss and a little extra sand to do a little bit of leveling in some areas like this and uh here little little spots and try to get this thing kind of moving as we go into springtime first things first i'm just throwing the sand down through my drop spreader I'm only doing about 800 pounds this time around, and then I'm gonna come back around with about another 800 pounds here in the very near future. The way I did this was layered, sand first, then the peat moss, and then there's gonna get more sand. So I got a little patchwork going on behind me right here. Kind of went over the uh, heavier spots where it was like a little more low. I am going to drag the level lawn across it real quick, but for the most part, I think I could probably brush this in and I use just a push broom for that. Then I'm going to grab uh, some sphagnum peat moss and get that down here as well. And kind of get this whole thing sort of covered up some more. I actually did uh, a turf mend overseeding application on this um, last, like right before winter time. So there's seed in here that's going to be germinating as things start to warm up. And I'm thinking that if I just get a nice layer of that peat down, and then I'll do some more sand later, um, I can kind of keep this thing warmed up over the next few days as things kind of get a little funky around here again. So, so now it's just smooth, smooth, smooth. Get that stuff just as flat as you possibly can before you go back over it again. So now it's time for the peat moss. I just take this, a couple of bales, throw it across the whole thing, smooth it out as best as I can, one thing you can do is have this pre-mixed with your sand, which would actually be better, and it would be just a lot more easy to work with. But you can do it this way as well, and then add another layer of sand and just start flattening everything out. So just remember, the idea here is to get some high CEC material in with that sand, especially if you continue to top dress with sand or level with sand year over year. You're going to want to do this. So quick recap. Just make sure if you're building up with sand, if you keep leveling and you're doing this over and over more and more, work some peat moss in there. It's gonna make a big difference. It's going to hold more moisture. It's going to help hold nutrients better in that sand bed that you're filling up. And ultimately your lawn is gonna benefit from it. But then I, something doesn't feel right about any of this. I don't feel Watch this video next.